genius. Get on to my show. When Patrick, for the first time, was like, you should be a singer. He doesn't sound like that at all. But <laughs> that's what he said. And I was like, I got to check this out. Right. So I went and, uh, what do you do? You download the three tenors CD. That's it. And I so I listened to it and I was like, this is pretty cool. Like, yeah. I don't sound like these guys, but I wonder if there's anything on here I could sing. Mm-hmm. And I sang No Puede Ser because mm-hmm. it's like not too high, not too crazy intense. Mm-hmm. And um, so I just sang that all the time. It like, almost became a joke. Right. You know? Yeah. And Domingo is the one that sings it on the record. Right. So I go in and the pianist Nino was running a few minutes behind and so Placido comes in where were you at up in one of the rehearsal rooms yeah I think we were in room one again uh-huh. Uh-huh. and uh, he came in and I kind of expected to be a little intimidated but at the same time one of one of the many really useful skills I learned working at like a TV studio in addition to like dealing with stress and kind of sometimes eccentric people is that you know all kinds of people would be on the Dr. Phil show Mm -hmm. and there was one time i remember working for dr phil that like my boss was directing a scene there was some editing emergency that he had to go Mm -hmm. and deal with so it was Mm -hmm. me like two full-on professional camera crews Mm -hmm. and dr phil and i was holding the script for like all these promo lines and so that was kind of that was kind of a cool day yeah because he was sitting like right where you are i was across from his desk in his office with his dog growling at me because he has a dog that growls at everybody and he loves it that's charming uh yeah really um and after everyone, he'd say, tomorrow on Dr. Phil, what can you do about the human? <laughs> and then he'd look up at me, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, okay. And a couple times, I was like, why don't we try that with a little emphasis here? And he like took it from like some 25-year-old kid. And I was like, yeah. yeah. But what I learned from that, like I drove Fran Drescher around on the lot once with her little dog, mm-hmm. and like all these different people that would come by. Is that like you get in a room with these people and it's like they're just people. It's just some just, guy. Yeah. They put it's their pants on one leg at a time. Yep. Yep. And like even if they want you to think they're this big monolithic fancy, it's like it's all BS. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. And so he came in and I was like, Oh, cool. All right, well, cool. That's like that's the guy. And no extra nerves were added wow, because of man, that. That's really something. That was gonna be my next question because I've suffered with nerves my whole life. Yeah. So that's awesome to hear well i i do too but it's mostly usually like internal like i just hope i don't screw up that's it and like and all that stuff yeah uh and i also have to say that placido helped tremendously he's so nice isn't he's he? like he's the nicest man I, I described it like santa claus walks in the room yeah because he's like hey hello how are you all of my impressions sound russian uh, yeah and none of them are russian <laughs> um but he was just oh, so it's friendly. very nice to meet you mr like, bliss yes, oh yes he's he's so very, nice very good, good very good and okay. you could smell his cologne yep. which he has a very distinct like you know and it was a very reassuring thing and since the pianist was late uh he said what 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 will you sing and it was just he and i in the room yeah um so you got to break the ice a little bit yeah i was like i'm gonna sing echo and he goes ah echo ridente. <laughs> and then he goes he starts singing it goes over the piano and starts playing it and so we're singing along echo ridente together Jesus the little Christ. recitative part at the beginning and then we we stop and he says, yes, you know, once I was recording this in like the 60s, like Placido, that's not really in his wheelhouse, no, that role, no, the Rossini, no. but he recorded it. Yeah. And I guess the, like, his story was the baritone got sick. So he had to go and perform somewhere that night and then got on a plane and flew back and recorded like um, the like the Figaro's part right. the next day. That's right. So he was singing with himself on this record, mm-hmm. which apparently is still out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I felt really at ease. Wow. Dennis came, sang Acoridente for him. And then he looked at the list and said, hey, we will hear No Puede Ser. So there I am singing this, 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 this tune for In him. In your wheelhouse. Yeah. And uh, he said, okay, well, we will have you join the program. And I was like, whoa, cool. What does that mean? Like, do I get a job? Yeah, is it, there's a the money involved. So Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So they shook my hand. And then, like, I was just standing there. They all got up and, like, left the room and, like, walked out. And so I, like, I waited 30 seconds. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to get out of here. And I walk out of the room and I can see them way down the hallway at the other end waiting by the elevator. And I was like walking really slow. I was like, I don't want to like make this awkward, awkward. And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, sneak yeah. up on the back of them. But of course that elevator takes forever. Every, yeah. So I come up behind him and like I tap Josh on the shoulder and I was like, hey, <laughs> um, is there a bathroom up here? He's like, yeah, it's, it's back there. <laughs> so it was a little awkward. But then uh, after they got on the elevator, I remember sprinting up and down the halls like three or four times because I was just dude, like so awesome. jacked, you know?